Hi, uh, welcome to my latest video. Um, I'd like to uh, share with you how I choose my um, reference photos and what process I go through in, in deciding which is the best uh, photograph to use for one of my portraits. Um, I get quite a few uh, photographs sent through to me. Uh, sometimes I get just one and somebody just wants me to, to draw um, directly from that one photograph and other times I get quite a few um, and, and sometimes it's really really difficult to choose which is the best one. Um, so I just thought I'd, I'd share with you uh, some of the um, some of the thoughts I have uh, before actually choosing um, which which photograph to go with. Um, so I've got four photographs here Gorgeous Paddy is a Highland pony, belongs to one of my friends and she's given me permission to use her photographs. Um, and you can see they're all very different um, and he looks quite different in each photograph. Uh, her favourite one is the top left, um, which is actually the one that I'm, I, I am using currently uh, to draw his um, portrait from. Um, so my, my thought process when I get these photographs is uh, the first thing I look at is the quality of the photo. Um, so I'm just going to zoom in here so you can actually see um, the quality. This is actually a PDF that I've taken into Lightroom so that you can see all four of them together. And the quality is actually really good, uh, you know, really, really high detail. Let me just find the one of him so you can see the actual high detail. Here we go. Um, oops. So you can see all of that lovely detail in there that I can then um, replicate in my drawing. Um, so that's the that's the first thing that I look for. Uh, if I'm lucky, then I get great detail, and I'm like, that's that's fantastic. I can work with that. The next thing I look at uh, is the composition of the piece. Um, you know what's going to look good in a a portrait. Um, so if you look at these four different photographs, but they all look very different, um, the, the, the problem when you're taking photographs um, at quite a close range to get that detail is that the camera can really distort uh, the horse's head. So when you're looking at the photograph, it's not how you would see a horse with the naked eye. So if we look at this one here, you can see that the, uh, the, the, the nose is, is elongated. Um, you know, it's really quite long and it's and it's become larger at the bottom than actually it would look in real life. Um, I, I could use this one, um, but what I would end up doing is actually altering the, um, the, the horse's nose, uh, shortening it, making it sort of uh, thinner at the bottom um, just to make it look like an actual horse. In the photograph, it looks it looks fine. But once you actually cut this out and um, remove the background and you make it a drawing it, it becomes even more obvious that there's a distortion in the horse's head and sometimes you can you can you can draw the the the, the, the horse and at the end of it you're like oh something quite not quite right here and you, you don't really understand what it is and it, and it will be to do with the distortion that the camera has given the, um, yeah, the, the photograph and the same with these two here lovely photos good detail um, but again, you get the distortion. Um, you know, you get sort of this the the um, the thinness of the neck up at the top. Not so much in these two, more in this one than this one. Um, you just get like a bit of a weird angle, so that the 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 horse's head is is elongated um, and distorted slightly. And and actually, they probably wouldn't make the best uh, portraits. Um, so I I would go with this one. Um, it's a it's a profile shot, so it's not. It's a it's a nice composition. Uh, it would have been even nicer if it had been turned slightly so that you could see the other ear. You can actually see a tiny bit of the ear here. Um, and in my drawing, I'm just adding a little bit more just so it kind of balances it out better. Um, so it would have been nice if it was just turning his head slightly so you got more of a three quarter um, of his face. Uh, but but this is the one that we're going with. It's good quality. There's no distortion, so he's got his lovely straight profile. He's got his you know the neck. And actually, if you're going to be taking photos, or you're asking your client to take photos, um, and they're always coming back with these distorted ones, better to ask them to take straight on a, a, a profile picture straight on because then you're less likely to get the um, this, this distortion that, that you're getting. Um, the next thing to look at is the is the lighting. Um, and 
um, the, the lighting really does increase the um, the visual appeal of the finished piece. Um, I can tweak this in Photoshop, I can tweak it in Lightroom. Um, what's a really cool thing to do is to actually add a filter in, in an app like Snapseed or, or even just a filter on your, um, on your phone when you, edit the when you edit the photograph. You can just add something that, just to um, look at the contrast, so the highlights are, are, are brought out a little bit more, the darks are made darker. Um, but I will look at this piece before I actually start it. I will look at the piece and I'll think, right, okay, which bits are going to cause me issues? Um, the client specifically doesn't want the head collar on this, so I need to make sure that I I understand what's underneath the head collar. Um, you know, the, the, the projecting cheekbone here, what's underneath that? Is it just plain fur? Is there a, and there's obviously like, there's a dip in there, the bones coming down here. What do I need to add in to make it look right when I remove that head collar? Um, these are all the things that I want to be thinking about before I actually put pencil to paper. Um, the darks, you know, are there some, there's some really, really dark areas. What's in those dark areas? Can I lighten the photograph up um, to see the detail within those light areas? Put the detail in and then put the, the darks back over the top. Um, uh, how am I going to, um, you know, how am I going to create the look of this lovely sort of thick, shiny fur? Um, these are all the things that I start to think about before I, I even attempt to decide what sort of paper I'm going to put it on. Um, because then I can, I can start to visualise how I'm going to lay this down and, and, and what techniques I'm going to use. Um, and if there are any areas that I think, right, okay, that's really going to cause me an issue. So that the main area of issue in this one is removing the head collar. Um, so straight away I can start to think about what's underneath it, how I'm going to do it, how I'm going to replicate what I think is underneath it. Um, and then it's much easier when I come to do it because I've already kind of thought about it and I've already got an idea in my head as to, um, you know, what's under there and, and what I can do to, um, uh, you know, to, to make it look real rather than missing like a big piece of the bone structure out. Um, and that's basically how I, um, how, how I choose uh, my, uh, my reference photo. Um, you know, you, you, you want to be choosing the best, the, the best composition for the, for the piece, um, for your drawing, the one with the less distortion, um, and, uh, and, and the best lighting.